sometimes people will think that the pennies are just not worth saving, that it has too much of a hassle factor for them to take their time to do that. I'm going to share with you today how I turn those no's in my life into a yes and all the difference that it makes in the end. Many times I will hear from people that those pennies are just not worth their time in saving. And I'm going to share with you how I look at that and how I save money so that it makes a difference in my life. By doing this, I've been able to retire early at the age of 57 and I continue to save money where I can. But I also continue to do the things that are important to me, like wintering right now in South Texas and taking vacations and having fun with my extra money that I save. One of the tricks that I use is I look at it as I'm working for myself. When I'm hanging clothes on the line and I'm saving money by not using that dryer, by keeping that dryer breaker flipped off, I am keeping money in my own pocket rather than getting money and then handing it over to the electric company. I do that in a lot of small ways around my home that saves me big in the end. I cook at home as much as possible. I prep things, I buy things on clearance and on offers, and then I freeze them and I store them and I stretch that food out to make those dollars mean more in my home. I use what I have first, I decide what I'm going to make Sometimes I make up recipes to make my food stretch and to keep things from getting boring. But every time that I do that, I'm keeping dollars in my own pocket. So the trick to that is finding ways to motivate yourself so that instead of saying, no, that's not worth my time, you can make it easy to say, yes, it is worth my time because I can see the benefits in the end. Our electric bill has been running around $65. With me not there, the last bill at home was $56. So the ways that we save money in our home by keeping things unplugged and not keeping things with the breaker on like the dryer saves us money so that we can use that money somewhere else. I would much rather hang my clothes on the line than pay a $175 electric bill. So every time I get that bill, it motivates me that what I'm doing is working. I believe in using what I have first. I believe in upcycling things, recycling things, reusing things. So I try to look at everything that I have at my home as does it have another use? Is there another way I can make use out of this to keep myself from buying something else instead? Many times I can do that. Sometimes it's hard to talk ourselves into doing these things. For instance, right now I'm in South Texas. My in-laws have already left for the season. I'm down here with a skeleton crew of people that are left. A lot of people have gone home, but they were having a dinner the other day and I knew there was going to be a huge crowd there. I'm not a big crowd person and especially if I'm going by myself. But they were doing a carry-in dinner and I thought, you know, I'd kind of like to go, but I don't know if I can make myself go. And I had thought about it. I'd, I'd gone over in the morning to get some water. I saw they already had the table set. People were starting to save their place by putting out their tableware. And I thought, you know, if I put my tableware out, like some of them have done, then I have to go back, right? I have to go back. I might as well go back when they're having dinner. So I did a little trick like that to convince myself to go to that dinner and walk in alone. Then one of my neighbors asked me, are you going to go? 
And that was my final push to, yes, I'm going to go. So just doing little things like that can turn a no into a yes, but we have to know ourselves well enough to know how we can convince ourselves or motivate ourselves to turn those no's into a yes. And I knew if I put my plate over there that I would make myself go back at dinner time and I would sit down with everyone and eat. I've always been one of those people. I don't like to eat alone in public. I don't like to go places with a group if I don't know anybody. My husband is a big talker. So a lot of times when we go places, I can stick by him. He does a lot of the talking and I can be there, but not be on the spotlight and not be the one that has to carry on the conversation. That can feel really awkward for me sometimes. So I turned that no into a yes by knowing myself and putting that plate over there ahead of time. I brought a lot of things with me to use up while I was down here in Texas for the winter to make myself use what I had. I knew if I brought those little dabs that I would use them up, that they would get out of my house and that I could make my money stretch while I was down here, which made it where I could actually come. And I could justify that I was here and I didn't spend much money and it went really well. So maybe I could do it again in the future. One of the things that I did is I brought my little bits and dabs of my makeup that was left. And I have a pressed powder here from the Dollar Tree. I had two of them open and one of them was way less than this. In fact, it got to the point that it was crumbling, it was breaking, and in the past, I probably would have thrown it away because there was a hassle factor in using up what was left. But I challenged myself this time to use up the entire thing, to use up the crumbles, to smash them down. And it lasted like another month, me doing that, on this little $1.25 makeup. And I thought, you know, look how much farther that could go just by me challenging myself to use up what I have and to set the intention to use that first. So now I'm on the second one that was partially used, but I've heard that Dollar Tree is getting ready to raise some of their prices to $1.50. So I went out the other day and I bought a backup to keep so i'll be ready when this one goes out at the lower price and i may even go back and get another one or two more there's a few other things that i plan on picking up while i'm down here that are cheaper and those will save me money even though i'm going to take them back home with me one of the things was the heb brand popcorn it is microwave popcorn. There are six bags in there. And right now they were on sale with a coupon to make them $2.98. Well, microwave popcorn works perfect in the camper. We'll probably be doing some camping this summer. And I have never seen popcorn pop so well in a microwave bag as this brand does. It pops so full and all of the kernels are huge. And I thought this is about the best popcorn I've ever bought. And with this coupon, it's really affordable. So I'm going to get an extra box to put in the camper this summer. So if we camp, we can use the popcorn. I also challenged myself to try the HEB diet soda while I was here. Sometimes it gets hard to follow the sales to try to stay ahead of having the one soda a day that I allow myself. I enjoy that, but it takes a lot of tracking all of the sales to stay on top of that where I can stay ahead on my soda because soda has gotten so expensive. But I tried one of their HEB brand diet sodas and it was really good. Well, I can get a two liter down here for $1.26. So I'm going to pack some of those up in my trunk and take them home. And that way I can have some cheap soda and not have to keep chasing those diet Pepsi sales that are really tough to do. They even have it in the can. It is much cheaper in the can. And this is their day-to-day -day price. So while I'm here, I'm going to take some of that home with me so that I don't have to shop as soon as I get there trying to find a sale.
They also have sweetened condensed milk down here at a really low price. And I've started making my own caramel that I put in some of my coffee drinks. So I'm going to pick some of those up to take home as well. Once in a while, I can find them at a good deal at Aldi, but I thought uh, while I'm here and they're a good buy, I'm going to pick those up, which will save me money in the future. So see, I'm thinking ahead at how can I make this trip as valuable as possible? Even though I've been saving money and being frugal while I'm here, there are things I can take home from here that will actually save me money and make this trip even more valuable by stacking up those pennies. Here a while back, Avon had their eyeliner on sale for $2.99. I'm still an Avon representative and I stocked up on that because sometimes those can be seven or eight dollars and I really like their glimmer stick type. So I stocked up on those so that I don't have to chase those sales. I'm also going to be taking home some of the refried black beans down here from HEB that are really soft and good in the can. Sometimes the regular refried beans can be so dry and you have to add water, but I love the flavor of these refried black beans. So I'm going to be taking home several of those so that we will have those. I know we don't have any refried beans at home right now, so that's something I can stock my pantry with that is going to be a treat when I get home. So stocking up on some of those things that I know we're going to use is a great way for me to save those pennies farther down the line. All of my stockpile is done that way. I only stockpile when I see sales and clearance and offers of things I know I'm going to use and I know will save me money in the future. And then I can always follow those sales and those rotations to be able to catch them the next time that they're on sale and I never have to pay full price for anything. So I have been called a penny pincher before, but I have no problem being called a penny pincher because I can save money and I can use that money somewhere else. I wanna give you a recap of how I've saved money this quarter down here using some of my rebates right from my RV. So if you pay your credit card statements regularly every month where you don't have any interest, you can use those credit cards as a money maker. Yes, it takes a little bit of hassle factor, but it is worth it in the end, to me anyway, and I'm gonna tell you why. So Capital One gives you one and a half percent back. Discover sometimes gives you 5% back on some things. For the month of April, May, and June, it is on gas. So for April, May, and June, I will be using my Discover card and then doubling up with my Upside app to get bonus money back on my gas. And I will be using that in combination to go home when we go home at the end of the month for gas for my car and gas for my RV. So when we brought the RV down, it cost about $400 in gas to bring it down. So doubling up on those going home will give me some cash back towards the cost of that gasoline. I also have made sure that my electric bill for both the RV and for home went to my Capital One to get maximum cash back. I made sure that my internet for home and the RV went to my Capital One to give me maximum cash back. I also made sure that my cell phone bill goes to my Capital One to get maximum cash back. Now, a lot of those at one and a half percent, you might think you're chasing pennies. It's not a big deal, but I'm gonna share with you how this makes a difference in my life, being a frugal person and being an early retiree not on disability, not receiving any pension, not receiving any cash payouts on IRAs or anything right now. I'm living solely on savings. So these amounts make a big difference in my monthly budget. So just in the first quarter, using my Discover cash back and my Capital One cash back, I got a total of $34.41. That may not sound like much, but for me, that is a tank and a half of gas. I used my rebates and just 
on the ones that I got cash back out of this quarter, Swag Bucks, Upside, Receipt Jar, and Receipt Hog, I got an additional $58.58. So that helped a lot. That was a good chunk of money to me. On my Amazon cash back, I had $5.32. I had to buy some toilet bowl cleaners for home while I was gone, and I had to buy some new undergarments while I was here. That's where that cash back came from. I don't normally use Amazon, but I did use it twice during the first quarter. My money market interest for the first quarter was $40.73. All of those amounts separately might sound like pennies, but when you add them all together for the quarter, that gave me a total of $139.04. Now, if you take that times four quarters, you will end up with a decent amount of money, like $600 or more. So those amounts do make a difference because I live on probably less than $900 a month easily. And I'll probably do another budget update soon to give you an account of that. But $600 is like two thirds of my monthly budget. So that is huge for me. That $139.04 paid for all of my internet down here in Texas for that entire quarter, plus a tank and a half of gas. So if you look at it like that, that knocked expenses off of my monthly budget that I didn't have to come up with money for. So that's how I convince myself that those pennies are worth my time, that those pennies are worth me taking the time to plan and use and take advantage of because that's just extra money coming to me. I don't have to go to work, leave my home for that. They just all come to me. Just looking at it that way is the way that I'm able to convince myself that those pennies matter. That's $139 this quarter that helped me pay some bills, knock them off my budget and not have to come up with that money in another way to pay those bills. So that is worth it to me, especially with me wanting to not go back to work full time. Now I am excited to tell you that I did already get my part-time gig work job back working on the election board for our township. I had done this many, many years ago and I'd done it a couple of different times for several years and I had taken vacation time and then I would work the election board for extra money when my kids were younger. But that is a side gig that I'm going to do again. So I will be working the election board in August and I will be working it again in November and I will have training days that they will pay me for prior to doing that. And it's one of those jobs in our area that once you were on that election board, you can stay on there as long as you want, but you have to wait for an opening to come open. So I'm really excited to have got my position back there. And that will be a little bit of extra money coming in before the holidays. So I hope this has helped you see why I think those pennies are worth my time, why I take the time to earn that extra money to help myself pay some of these bills so I can continue the lifestyle that is the most meaningful to me. If this video has brought you any value, please give me a thumbs up. It helps this channel grow. I really appreciate it. And if you want to support this channel, that is the best thing you can do for me is leave a comment or give me a thumbs up. I hope to see you in the next video.